Hello everyone, welcome back. This is the first episode of Tool Tech Tuesday with Jim's Machine, and we'll be talking about what can be one of the most frustrating tasks on your Harley Davidson, removing the main shaft primary bearing race from the transmission. Now in today's video, we'll unbox the Jim's tool you'll need to do the job, explain why this repair may be necessary, and I'll even give you some pro tips on how to make it easier and show you how you can preserve the life of the tool. Nobody likes busted knuckles and broken tools, so stick with us. Jim's Machine wants to start this new series with a bang, so we're having a photo caption contest. Now, two prizes are going to be awarded. One YouTube channel member will win a $250 gift certificate for any item out of the Jim's USA catalog. A lot of people don't know it, but Jim's does a lot more than just tools. One YouTube channel subscriber will win the tool being featured in the video. You must be a channel member or a subscriber and hit the notification bell to receive future video updates to have a chance to win. I'll show the photo later on in this video. All you need to do is leave a comment below and your best caption, but keep it clean. Winners will be announced in the next Tool Tech Tuesday episode next week. The main shaft or primary bearing race actually serves two purposes. One, it works with the inner primary bearing to support the main shaft of the transmission. There's the bearing there on your inner primary. Now on one side of this bearing is the transmission. On the other side is the entire primary drive, your, your clutch, the chain, the compensator, and, and so on. So this bearing does take a lot of abuse. The second purpose is to provide a sealing surface for your inner primary seal. Now, pro tip number one, if you ever experience an inner primary seal leak, it's always a good idea to install a new race as well as a new bearing. The bearings and races are designed with very specific clearances. They do wear together. So by changing the seal, the bearing, and the race together, you're keeping the main shaft supported as best as it can be. And you're also giving the seal a new surface to seal against. Now, let's unbox the tool. This is Jim's main shaft bearing race kit for big twins, part number 34902-84. If you need one of these tools, you gotta buy them from somewhere. Check a link in the description below, which will take us to our, web, to our website at Baxter's Garage where you can buy one of these tools. One of the first things you get is a set of these thermal stickers. This is very important during the disassembly process, so we wanna keep those in a safe place. This would be the installer tool. This piece here would thread onto the end of the main shaft and then you use this sleeve to install it, but we'll get to that in episode two when we rebuild this transmission. You get the small collar here, which is what slip be slips behind the bearing race, which looks like that. You'll get this bar the threaded tool here, and two long bolts and washers. Now I will suggest a couple of little things to help you keep your toolbox organized. I always keep the boxes for my tools, and if I need quick access, I'll actually just cut the top of the box off and use this as an organizer. The other thing I do is keep these pieces of styrofoam because when I'm done with the tool, you know, they are threaded and I want to protect those threads. So anytime I'm done with the tool, I'll wrap it back up in the styrofoam and throw it into the box. This is a six-speed cruise drive transmission from a twin cam and it belongs to Jeff, one of our channel subscribers. Now the process is going to be the same for transmissions on M8 models all the way back to 1984. So this is definitely a must-have tool for anyone that works on Harleys. Removing the race can be more frustrating on older cruise drive and five-speed models because the race can actually walk toward the transmission, making it impossible to get this part of the tool behind the race so you can pull it off. I've seen many deal with this issue either by using a cutting tool 
and then a chisel with a hammer to split this race, but when you do that, you run the risk of damaging the main shaft. But more commonly, I have seen people take this part of the tool and use it as a wedge behind the race, hammering it into place. Of course, this most certainly will damage the tool and again could damage the main shaft. You know, of course, Jim's has a lifetime warranty on their tools, but a broken tool only delays the job. There is an easier way. So pro tip number two, if you have an older transmission and this race has walked toward it and you can't get the tool in behind it, you only need about an eighth of an inch of clearance for this tool to slip behind the race. So if you remove the side cover of the transmission here, loosen this nut on the main shaft, put the transmission in neutral, then take a soft face dead blow hammer and tap on that main shaft, then you can actually slide the main shaft over just enough to give the tool clearance to slide right into place. Once the race is removed, then you would tap the shaft back in the opposite direction and torque this nut down and then reinstall the cover. Now Harley did make a positive change to the main shaft on later models by adding a shoulder to the main shaft, which prevents the race from walking in. So that's a good thing. To remove the bearing race, you really only need any other very basic tools from there. You'll need a three quarter inch socket. I like to use a torque wrench and I'll explain why here in just a second. You'll need a propane torch, would be perfectly fine, and either a inch and a sixteenth open end wrench or you can use a crescent wrench as well. Anytime I get a new tool in, I always, especially if it's a threaded press or pulling tool, it's always a good idea to lubricate the threads. I always start there. Uh, you can use any type of high pressure lubricant. Uh, you can use anises if you like, but you know, you put anises in one place and it ends up every place. So I typically will just use regular engine assembly lube. Again, it's a high pressure lubricant. It's going to preserve the life of the threads. So then I'll install the puller onto the threaded portion. Then we'll install the anvil on the end. And of course, you'll notice how the anvil is tapered, which is designed to center itself and hold center here on the main shaft. Also like to put a little high pressure lube on the threads here. Then we can pre-assemble the tool. Now when you thread these bolts into the horseshoe at the end of the tool, make sure the end of the bolts are flush or just below the, the surface and that they're equal length. If they're equal length, when you start your pulling operation, you won't get the tool in there crooked and potentially cause any damage. You'll notice the shape of this horseshoe. It's actually recessed on that's basically three sides. So when you place this behind your race, you want to make sure that the race is fully seated on the tool as much around the perimeter as possible instead of just grabbing the race at the very end. Make sure it's fully seated all the way like that. Now once you have this threaded in, you can just secure it by hand. Again, making sure that the horseshoe is completely seated all the way behind the bearing race. Now every tool is going to have a working load limit. The working load limit for this tool is roughly about 50 foot-pounds before you'll start to damage the horseshoe. So what I like to do is use my torque wrench. I'll set my torque wrench at about 40 foot-pounds. Then I know I'm not going to damage the tool. If the bearing starts to move easily with only 40 foot-pounds, great, we got lucky. If we find it doesn't move after 40 foot-pounds, we're going to show you pro tip number three on how to make it easier to get this thing out of here. So if you set your torque wrench at 40 foot pounds, hold this in with a crescent wrench or an open end wrench. All right, we're at 40 foot pounds. The bearing hasn't moved. This is gonna be a little tough one. Okay, now is when we want to apply a little bit of heat. This is where the thermal stickers come in. Now, one of the fears with applying heat, you have to be careful with this sort of thing because you do have seals that are on, in, on the inside of here. And if the seal's not leaking, may not need a, be a need to replace it. So we take two of these thermal stickers and apply them on opposite sides of the main shaft. 
The stickers will, you'll notice the squares are actually white. When they approach 200 to 210 degrees, the dots in the middle of these stickers will turn black, indicating that's as hot as you need to go. And you want to put that sticker as close to the bearing race as you can get it. And the reason that you put one on both sides is so you can see, obviously, that the temperature is, the heat is being evenly distributed. Now let's fire up the torch. Now when you're using the torch and heating it, spin the main shaft a little bit, work your way all the way around again so you can evenly distribute the heat. And then once your thermal stickers turn black, you're at about 200 degrees there, then you can set your torque wrench at 50 foot-pounds, the working limit of the tool. Use your open-end wrench or a crescent wrench. Once the bearing race comes completely off the shaft, you can just slide the, the tool off. This still may be hot, so be careful with that. You can set that off to the side. And that pretty much does it, guys. Now for the contest, if you remember. If you are one of our channel members, you will win a $250 gift certificate toward the purchase of anything from the Gems USA catalog. That's pretty cool. If you're a channel subscriber, you can win one of these tools that we showed you today. The contest, caption this photo. To enter, be sure to leave your comment below and caption that photo. Once again, guys, I really appreciate you watching. Thanks for joining us. And next week on the second installment of Tool Tech Tuesday, we will be tearing down this cruise drive transmission and then doing a basic rebuild. Thanks for tuning in. As always, take care of yourselves and each other. Have a good one.